Hey everybody out there on YouTube. This is Tom again. I'm in Western North Carolina near the John C. Campbell Folk School. Anyways, the other day I put this chair together and you'll notice that it's not sitting flat. I got this board that I use as a table on my drill press. I perceive it to be the flattest thing that I have available, even flatter than my uh, $100 table saw top. And I'm going to show you how I go about leveling these legs up. But before I do that, I want to uh, tell you a step that takes place after the putting together, which was the last video. And one of them is to go around with your sandpaper. And, you know, this front was laying on the bench when I was beating that together. Sometimes there gets little marks on here. I go around and carefully get them off. And then also here on the back, on the back, you might get a couple of little dings or something in these back posts. And so I go ahead and rub that with sandpaper like that. And it usually is very um, cosmetic and just little something. So it's good to just get them out of there. Another thing you do when, after you put a chair together is go around at all these places where the rung has gone in to the leg. And every now and then there's a little... Uh, I don't know what you want to call it, but a sliver or something has popped up and shows right there. And you go want to go around and get them off of there. I had a couple little ones. And sometimes when those rungs go in, there's little burrs on them. And they get, they get like bent back like that when they're going in that tight hole. And you need to nip them off. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and show you how I go to level this chair up. And one, one of the things with just about all chairs in their final position is you want to put just a little bit of lean back in them. And the way you do that is at right now is this stage of the process is you decide how much lean back you want. And I'm going to use right here two nuts that are for half inch bolts. They're three quarters of an inch measured this way. And I'm going to put them underneath, up on their edge, under the front legs. Okay. And so that, if now I level this chair, there's going to be a little bit of kickback. And I'm going to take this tool. This is homemade, but you can buy a similar tool from some of the uh, tool catalogs. I don't know what you call it, but there's a pencil and it's adjustable up and down. And I'm going to set this gauge. I'm pushing this chair down so the front legs, these two legs touch, and this long leg back here, there's a little gap under this one. That's why it's rocking. But I'm going to set this pencil right at the height here of where those nuts elevate this, these front legs. And that was already set, apparently. And so I'm going to take that now and I'm going to make a mark around these back legs. I'm holding this flat on this surface. And I'm going around here. And I'm holding this chair down. It's contacting here, here, and here. Not here. But this mark is the same distance up from this surface. And so there's, there's more going to get cut off this leg than this leg. And theoretically, there all these levels here are in line with this piece here. Okay, I've set that aside, set these nuts aside. Nuts of different sizes uh, make good little spacers for things like that. 
I'm going to just take this and put it back over on my drill press. And then I'm going to, you can see here that I have a mark on these back legs right here. So I'm going to set this chair right here on my bench. Put a little shim right there to hold it. I'm going to go ahead and clamp this. I could saw these off without clamping it. But if I clamp it, it'll be a little bit steadier, I guess. Come on, clamp. So that's pretty pretty rigid right there. Now I'm gonna take this here hacksaw that I only cut wood with this hacksaw. You'll notice up here on my thing there's one here wood and then metal. I haven't changed this blade in maybe I can't even remember. It might be 20 years. I only cut wood with this one. But I'm gonna saw these off right on these lines. <laughs> See how I'm holding that? It, I've got to be careful, and that prevents me from just slamming through at the end of a saw cut, especially with a handsaw at the end. You can do a lot of damage tearing out on the back side, so you not want to be too aggressive, especially right at the end of your cut. This one's easier because it's not so much flexing around. Just got to be real tender right here at the end of the cut so I don't damage the bench very much. You, there's quite a few little nicks in this bench right here that I'm trying to not make them too many more. Okay, there's the two pieces I just cut off. You can see one of them's bigger than the other. But I'm going to take those pieces and put them right here in my firewood bag. All little pieces of wood that I get right here, real close, go into a paper bag like that. They get burned later. Why throw them in the trash? I think I'm a little bit crazy in that regard, but that's what I do. I save all those little pieces of wood. All right, I'm going to put this back up here, setting perfect, well, setting perfect on this <laughs> uh, thing, which I don't know is perfect or not. I'll put this back over here. Oh. See how that's not wiggling around anymore? So that's setting pretty flat. According to that, another way you can check to see if something's flat or in line with each other is you can put winding sticks on, and I just use these squares as winding sticks. You can put them like that, and you can sight. You might. I don't know if I'm in the camera, but I'm backing up and I'm sighting. I'm sighting right across those two things. You guys will know what winding sticks are, I'm sure. Or you can look it up in a book or magazine. But anyways, if you sight across them, and it's pretty imperceptible that there's any difference in those two, it, those things are pretty much in the same plane. And that's, that's a way you can check for uh, flatness. If you don't have anything that's flat to set your thing on, that's how you can check it. Now the next thing I'm going to do, and I'm not going to show you 
make you watch all of this. You don't have to watch any of this. I can't make you watch anything, but I'm not going to film all this. See, right now I'm cleaning up some of those little tags that come out. I'm seeing them now that I've got this chair upside down. Cleaning that up. Just little bitty things that probably a person would never notice. But anyways, now the next step that I'm going to do is go around this chair and put a little bevel on the bottom of all these legs. I usually do this sitting down in a chair or sitting at my shaving horse with a chair upside down like this. But I can spin the chair around so I can get every angle easier. Got my back to you there. That's no good. But I'm just, I don't have a camera person to move around and stuff. So I just have to stay in this one position to show you this. And I'm just trimming this bottom a little bit. It's a little discolored from being around so long. So anyways, I've got a little little chamfer on that. There's one that's done. And here's the other one that hasn't been done yet. You don't want to leave don't want to leave those sharp corners on there. Anyways, I'm not going to show you the other three legs, but they all get done the same. Now, another thing that's going to happen on the chair is these tops are going to get trimmed that same way. And again, I'm just doing this in a manner that I don't have to change the camera. But anyways, they're going to get the same treatment. I go across that front edge, make a taper on there. It's a little bit different than I usually do it, but like I say, it's camera angle. But then that top, that top is a saw cut at some point, so it's a little ragged. So you take your knife and that round part of your knife right there at the front of the knife, that's, you know, that curvature, you can sort of use that like a plane. And you guys know that a plane, the blade on a plane isn't completely flat. It's slightly curved. And you can, when you use that part of that blade on there, you put little furrows in there that are you can make them imperceptible if you want, but you can also leave them so that it looks like it's hand, you know, somebody's actually done it with by hand with a knife. And I've, I've had customers, I've sold a person a chair, or they've had a chair for a while, and then I made them another chair or a stool or something. And I did not do that step that hand look step and they complained about that. You know, I had just sanded it. You could take a block with sandpaper and make that just flat smooth with sandpaper. Well, there is a difference and some people notice it. But anyways, there's one that's done. I think it's done. And there's the other one that's not been done yet. But I'm gonna go ahead and do all them. And then that chair will be uh, pretty much finished. All right. I'm going to pause for a second. 